Welcome back everyone to Planet Linux. You may be familiar with the numerous apps that are built into GNOME, but did you know that there are dozens more that are specifically designed to enhance the GNOME desktop? Developers can submit their apps to the GNOME Circle program, and so long as they meet a few specific requirements, like using GNOME's interface guidelines and receiving regular updates, they can become a part of this curated GNOME app program. One of these apps is called Curtail, and it's an easy-to-use image compression utility that allows you to compress picture files with either lossless compression, which aims to retain the original image quality, or lossy compression, which prioritizes reducing the file size, though at the expense of some quality. It's an incredibly useful tool that we'll cover the features of today. As with most of the GNOME Circle apps, Curtail is available as a flat pack through FlatHub, though it may also be packaged into your distribution's repos as well. Once opened, you're greeted with a simple and straightforward interface, including a button to browse image files and a menu providing access to various preferences, the list of keyboard shortcuts, and information about the app. Now honestly, this app is a prime example of the GNOME Human Interface Guidelines at their best. It provides a really simple and compact interface in an app that's designed to do one particular task really well. Now, get this camera out of my face, because that's not how this works here. Anyways, in the preferences, we can choose whether we want Curtail to overwrite the original image with the compressed version, or save the compressed photo as a new file where we can specify how we should name the new one. We can also choose whether we want Curtail to keep the metadata and photo attributes from the original image in the new compressed version. The timeout can also be adjusted if a single photo is taking an exceptionally long time to compress and therefore holding up the queue. On the compression tab, you can adjust the maximum amount of compression that's allowed, individually for both lossy and lossless compression of various file types. Setting these values higher for lossy compression will reduce the file size further, but also reduce the quality more. Higher compression for lossless files will take longer, but in either case, these settings are just the maximum allowed amount of compression, and oftentimes photos can't actually be compressed this much. So, when you're ready to compress a photo, just select whether you want lossless or lossy compression, then either click the Browse Files button and select the desired images, or just drag them into the main window. Curtail will automatically go to work compressing them according to the chosen settings, and once complete, it will show by what percentage the size has been compressed. I first ran this batch of photos with lossless compression, which retains the quality, and it was able to reduce their file sizes by roughly 7%. I then ran them through again using lossy compression, and it reduced the sizes by nearly 15%. And at least in this particular case, with the photos being from my phone camera, I couldn't really notice much reduction in quality from the originals. I'm moving between them here and can't really tell much difference. And that's all there is to it. In typical Linux fashion, Curtail is designed to do this single task incredibly well, and it's an elegant interface with sufficient settings to suit your needs. Now, as we've recently surpassed 1,000 subscribers, which a huge thank you to all of you, by the way, uh, I'm going through uh, the various Linux questions that I've received from all of you recently. Today's question comes from GoofyBlood, asking what the style is that's being used for the custom layout in Nobara. Well, the custom layout is actually achieved through various GNOME extensions that are enabled out of the box. Some of them include dash to panel for this whole panel layout here, arc menu for the app menu and its layout, app indicator for the system tray notifications, clipboard history and pop shell for the clipboard and window tiling controls down here, just perfection for tweaking the exact layout of the clock and icons, desktop icons ng for, well, the desktop icons and all of the settings here, and blur my shell which lets the desktop background come through behind the activities overview. 
So thank you once again to Goofy Blood for the question, and thank you to all of you for subscribing and helping support the channel to this point. If you've enjoyed this video, leaving a like is greatly appreciated, and if there's anything that you'd like to say or ask about, feel free to post it in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time on Planet Linux.